We are basically one day, hours, we are hours away from Thanksgiving here in the U.S. And the question is, what is it that you are thankful for? I am interested in hearing what your thoughts are. So make sure that if you're in the live chat, that you share with me what it is that you're thankful for. If you're watching this thing back on replay, uh, let me know that as well. And if you are watching this on the podcast or listening to this on the podcast, I am always curious as to what people's thoughts are. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today. This is a show that we do on Wednesday to celebrate the best day of the week, that being New Comic Book Day. For those that don't know, this is the day in which new comics are actually released in local comic shops, and I'm hearing that things are getting back on track as it relates to the distribution of comics. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. Things appear to be getting back on track, but I'm always curious whether the, the, the stories that are being reported match the reality of what people are actually experiencing out there in the comic book community. So if your shop is back on track, if your shop is receiving their shipments, I want to know that. And if not, I also want to know that as well. In a hot second, we are going to go to the chat. And I want to hear what it is that you may have picked up at your LCS earlier today. If you read something that was pretty dope, let us know what that is so that we can put it on the top of our stack. And I'm going to be going to the chat here in a hot moment. And I see a couple of people putting up their comments here about what they are thankful for and uh, some wonderful comments. Somebody's like, I am thankful for my family. Where is it? Let me see that comment from Fat Dad says, thankful for a healthy family, brother. Well said on that, my friend, uh, Tina, Ooh, Tina, the OGs like Reggie and my friends that I've made here. Well said, uh, I, I could not disagree with the sentiment of that in any way, shape or form, my friend. Um, I, I think a lot of people will probably appreciate the, the perspective of the virtual friends that they've made. And, and I think now in some cases, the real friends, the real face-to-face -face friends that people have made as a result of coming to coming to uh, to Garage Con just the other day. So Doug is in here. I am thankful for wonderful friends and family and a fantastic creative collaborative partner. He's talking about me. He's talking about me. He's talking about Scott. Yeah, let me just go ahead and put it out there. He's not, let's just remove, remove all the ambiguity as to who he is talking about here. Uh, I talked to this guy earlier today. We, we spent uh, some time on the phone. I don't know how much time it was, but I probably spent double that amount of time walking the circle in front of my house, noodling what it is that we had discussed on the call. And uh, Doug, Doug's an awesome guy. Uh, he, he planted all kinds of seeds in my head today that, um, are continuing to germinate. They are they are continuing to germinate here. Uh, one thing that I want to do to the point of what it is that Doug just referenced here, I want to give a shout out to a couple of comic book shops, a couple of comic book shops that still have physical copies of the Guide to Smart Comic Collecting. This is the book that Doug and I just collaborated on with the assistance of Scott P getting the production done for us. Uh, we have completely sold out and um, there are some comic shops out there in the U.S. that actually still have hard copies of this available. Uh, let me see if I can do this. One of those shops is this one right here, J.A.F. Comics in Pennsylvania. Shout out to them. This is a dope graphic that was created uh, and is available. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the banner is on their website, jafcomics.com. They have hard copies of the book. I received two photos today from, uh, from people that were in the shop that saw the guide to smart comic collecting actually on the shelf. And I can tell you for a fact that it, it, it's a dope feeling. It is a dope feeling to see your your guide sitting on the shelf adjacent to to image to marvel to dc comics that is a surreal kind of thing so uh definitely a really cool thing to to have experience for me today that was a wonderful experience for me personally today so shout out to jaf comics in pennsylvania uh the other shop there are two more shops that i want to highlight for you guys that do have physical copies of the guide to smart comic collecting and shop. Here's the other one. 
This is A1 Comics, and they actually have, I do believe, three locations in the Sacramento, California area. Uh, you can see some of them coming up on screen. Sacramento, Roseville, and Folsom are where they have those shops. A1 has physical copies of the book, so if you're interested in getting a copy, you can reach out to, again, we have one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast, and, and a huge shout out to my buddies over here. And in Alaska, at Aegis, at Aegis, let me see if I can get the screen the right way. Here we go. There we go. Aegis Comics of Alaska, they picked up some copies of the book as well. Shout out to Lou and Amy for continuing to support the channel. These are three comic shops in the United States that have physical copies of the guide available. So uh, shout out to all three of them for supporting uh, the initiative. I am absolutely appreciative of each and every one of them uh, for picking up the copies that they did to make available. Uh, so if you are in the area of one of these shops, I encourage you to swing by and check it out. So uh, <laughs> Squirrel Madness is like, got my sign by Doug and the other guy. <laughs> Some other, some other Yahoo that can't write his name in cursive. <laughs> well done, brother. Well done. Uh, one on the North Coast. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have any North Coast participation, my brother. Uh, you know, we we put it out there, and we we were, uh, we are, we are thankful for the three comic shops that are that have responded, uh, and are hopeful. We are hopeful that. Other comic shops will respond in the future to allow us to continue making resources like this available to people. And I can tell you, I, I get it. Comic shops are under a lot of pressure. There's a lot of things that are coming their way. There are a lot of things that suck up their resources. And you guys know it's easy to spend money. It is really difficult to make money. Easy to spend, difficult to make. Uh, and so, again, if you happen to be in the area of one of these comic shops, try to support them and um, try to pick up one of these books. Philly Bourne says, good evening and happy Turkey Day to everyone. I will tell you, I will tell you that Thanksgiving is by far my favorite holiday of the year. I'm not I'm not a big holiday person just in general, but Thanksgiving is my, by far my favorite because it is about food, family, fun and depending upon one's orientation uh football it is about it is about those things and nothing else but those things so we are actually hosting this year i am excited about the the idea of having my family sit at my table not at my table it's actually shown up and uh and and just being together for the day so i'm very excited about that um unfortunately we have to start the day off with a, a thing called the turkey trot it's called the Turkey Trot. It is something that my community is doing. It starts at 8 a.m. We basically walk the entire community. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be honest. It's not It's not going to happen. Uh, I'm going to tap out at some point and jump in my golf cart. <laughs> I am not going to make it the whole route. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, as, as much as I love, as much as I love a good turkey and a trot together they just don't work for me dj links is in the house says the four f's you can not go wrong with that matt woods in the house says thanksgiving is my favorite holiday unless young kids are around it's all about hanging with family and uh friends well said brother brandon is in the house how you doing brother it is good to see you 2021 new age investment says happy thanksgiving giving gang hello to everyone he is just running down the list he's running down the list of names uh and, and you can see his order there folks on the screen so shout out to him uh, and again if you guys made it to your lcs today let me know what it is that you may have picked up. And if you read something that was dope, let me know what that is as well. I'm actually going to wait for some of those comments to come in. And I will tell you, I did not make it to the LCS today. I did not make it to the LCS. You know where I went? I went to Home Goods. I went to uh, to uh, Marshalls. And I went to Target. Uh, and there was one other stop. I can't remember what the other stop was, but uh, the wife, the wife had me doing decorations. She had me doing decorations, helping to pick out uh, various uh, things that could adorn the walls in our house, which are mostly bare because she had a different color palette in the previous house than what we, what we want to do in this one. Um, so I, uh, I was there basically helping her pick things out, uh, centerpieces for tables and counters and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I came home and then took a nap. <laughs> I literally walked in the house and went to sleep. And uh, it worked out incredibly well for me. So uh, let me see. I'm scrolling through some of the comments here. 
sitting. I'm uh, looking through some of the comments here. I think I saw uh, Discovery Bay. Discovery Bay is in the house. How you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Need to do the turkey trot tick tock. Ooh, ooh, brother. I, I, I don't exactly know what that fully means. I don't know if that's like a thing or whether you're mixing the tick tock with my turkey trot and making them one thing. The turkey trot tick tock. But what I will say to you is, I might be on the tox. I might be on the tox uh, because, uh, yeah, you've, I've got some extra time. I did not go to Bed Bath & Beyond. We did pick up a candle, a really big candle, but we did not go to Bed Bath & Beyond. Thank goodness. Thanks, goodness. Brandon says, I picked up Hulk 1 ASM newest issue in Avengers 13. That's what's up. Uh, what did you think of the Hulk 1, bro? What did you think of that? Um, the whole, uh, I think the, the Donnie Cates now is, is on there. I did not, of course, make it to the LCS, but I'm curious if you read it, Brandon. What did you think of the new Hulk one and the, uh, <laughs> and, the and the course of action that they're taking? Turkey trot, tick tock, make it. <laughs> uh, what is that? Jason says he picked up Dark Horse. Uh, Star Wars issue number one signed by Alex Ross. Congrats to you on that, brother. This is one dude I can always depend upon when I'm like, hey, what'd you pick up at the LCS? This dude always has a list. L. Smith, my man, L. He picked up ASM 79, Black Panther 1, Catwoman 37, uh, Death of Dr. Doom, uh, Invincible Sonya from uh, from Dynamite, uh, Wolverine 18, and others. There's other things he mentioned. Of course, you guys can see some of the, some of those things on screen. Scrolling through and uh, uh, scrolling through, scrolling through naps, bro. Hey, hey, naps, naps are amazing. Let me tell you, nap, man, a nap got me through college. <laughs> I would leave one class, have a little break. I would go take that 15 to 20 minute cat nap and be rejuvenated. Earlier in my career, when I started working at, at, a, at a specific company, I would close my door. I would roll up a, a, a t-shirt. I'm not a t-shirt, but a, a, like a sweater. I would lay my head down and lay on the floor. I would take a 15, 20 minute nap. I would wake up refreshed and keep grinding after brushing my teeth because that is critical. Brushing one's teeth after a nap is critical as is the cup of coffee that you have to have to get yourself going again. <laughs> Scrolling through, I'm scrolling through some of the comments here. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. I love taking naps, says Steven. That's what's up. Scrolling through, naps are, hey, you turn on some football, I'm taking a nap. That's all I'm going to say to you. Uh, even when I watch football, I would take a nap, wake up, continue watching whatever game was on. So Fat Dad Comics picked up a bunch of oldies. He picked up Ultimate Spider-Man issue number. Oh, no, he picked up a, a partial run of Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 59, ASM Volume 2, ASM uh, Volume 4 back issues, and some other stuff off of the whatnots. There you go. A lot of people are on the whatnots. Uh, Bor Philly Born says, no comics today, uh, but Friday when the half price kicks in, that's what's up. <laughs> I am not mad at you, brother. Uh, what is that? Uh, there you go. Hey, a, a bottom tier collector. Uh, we, we are glad that you stumbled your way into this live stream Greetings and salutations to you, sir. We we welcome all. We welcome all. Brandon Keith has still not read uh, the new Hulk issue number one. If anybody has read it, please let me know what you think about it. There we go. Eternal Thunder. How you doing? Where have you been? It's good to see you, brother. He said got the got Hulk and Thor. As you guys know, the creative teams kind of switched up on those. He says both are good. That's what's up. Uh, super superior Bryce says Radiant Black issue number 10 is the highlight of his new comic book today. I'm going to tell you, Radiant Black is kind of sort of my highlight as well. Here's why it's my highlight. Uh, because some people sent me photos today. And in one of those photos, what I essentially saw was uh, Radiant Black on the shelf. And next to it, to the right of it, was the Guide to Smart Comic Book Collecting by, uh, uh, by Doug Bratton. And myself. So uh, that was, it was a highlight for me as well, my friend. Uh, so again, if you guys did not have a chance to pick up the guide, there are three shops in the United States that have copies. JAF Comics in Pennsylvania, A1 Comics in Sacramento, and Ages of Comics in Alaska. Shout out to all three of those shops. So uh, what is it? Uh, a scroll, pretty fly for a Filipino guy. He picked up 
turkey cranberry in a can stove top stuffing turkey spam apple pie and hulk one so here's the thing this man is naming off some of my favorites. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to be completely honest. I love some stove top stuffing, okay? There, there was a period where I would uh, eat stove top stuffing year round. I didn't care. I love stove top stuffing. The other thing I love that he mentions here is cranberry in a can. I like my cranberry, the lines. I like to cut it thin with the lines. It's it's wonderful. It is wonderful. And I know a lot of people are like, that's gross. That is disgusting. It's jelly. I don't care. It's my meal. It's my favorite. I'm enjoying it. And I'm going to have some 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 uh, cranberry with the lines on it tomorrow. <laughs> It is going down. Shout out to Pretty Fly for a Filipino guy. Brother, if you if you put that turkey or if you put some other kind of meat product on the cutting board, the cutting board that you, you purchased for me, send me a photo because you take wonderful photos at a cutting board. I, I like to use your photos in the promotional uh, stuff that I do. <laughs> Brian LCS picked up ASM 79 Hulk 1, Death of Doctor Strange 3, and many, many more, he says. Steve White is putting out a shout out for uh, Fight Girls. Uh, he says, Fight Girls end it. And it was awesome. There you go. Scrolling through some of the comments here, a uh, lot of back and forth, a lot of conversation. I uh, need to explain to the college kids that you have to do. Uh, <laughs> Chuck says, need to explain to the college kids that you have to get up and do something before you can nap. You know, you know here's the thing. You know, you wouldn't think that you would have to explain that to them, but I think that you're absolutely right. Right. You literally have to spell it out. You literally have to spell it out. Scrolling through, uh, speaking of Brian, the uh, the comic book awards get not get uh, get announced on December 4th. If you guys don't know about these awards, I've been nominated for five categories. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to just sweep it. I'm, I'm hoping to just sweep all five categories. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be possible to be honest with you, but it is, it is awesome to have been nominated. Uh, whoever wins, whoever wins in the 11 categories that have been identified, uh, they, they are winners right along with those people that, that do not win simply because all of the folks that were nominated for these 11 categories were nominated by the comic book community. And then they were voted on by the comic book community. So whoever wins, whoever gets nominated, everybody on the list is, is, a, is a winner in my book. Scrolling down through some of the comments here. I am way behind on the comments. I have to play catch up. Uh, fight, the good fight says, didn't make it to the LCS, but he picked up. Ooh, ooh, X-Men 1 from 1991 specifically the Magneto cover. He picked it up at a CGC 9.8 Superior Spider-Man issue 17. That is a fantastic read. If you have not read Spy, uh, Spe uh, Superior Spider-Man, treat yourself. He picked up the one in 50 variant. That's what's up. Those are good books. Uh, scrolling through some of the comments here, uh, picked up Fight Power 1 through 10 for a dollar a piece. There you go. Might have to move to North Carolina for the cover. Oh, ooh. Ooh, Richard, I don't, I don't know if you should do that. Uh, I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> Scrolling just over the guy. <laughs> oh, so clearly there's a couple of other people up in here that love some stovetop. Matt Woods, is, he, he calls it blasphemy. He says stovetop stuffing on Thanksgiving with three question marks. Yes, man. I love stovetop. Don't question it. All you do is pop open that packet and pour some hot water and you stir it. And it is good to go. And it is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> Scrolling to some of the comments here. Uh, Reggie knows all, all the... <laughs> That's what's up. I do like red things. I do. I do. What is it? I do like the cranberry jelly over the preserves. Says I, there, there are some of you that I like more and more every time you make a comment. I like you more and more. Justin, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you, my friend. Scrolling through. Um, I just uh, I just passed a ton of comments. I was just so behind. I was so behind. Um, uh, you 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 honest, you can't go wrong. I'm gonna be honest with you. So the wife and I were in, we were shopping today. 
picking up different things for the house, right? Because uh, even though my family has been here numerous times, my wife, I think, felt the pressure of trying to do something extra for the holidays. And so we have walls that don't have art on them because she changed the color palette. Uh, we, we just got a new table delivered that needed some things. So she wanted to go out and she wanted to pick up some stuff. And so we went to to Home Goods. We went to Marshall's. Um, uh, we went to another Hobby Lobby. Ooh, we went to Hobby Lobby. That's what the, what I forgot. And we went to Target. We went to four spots and uh, spent we spent a lot of money, uh, unfortunately. But but she picked up some wonderful stuff. I helped her pick out some stuff that I think works really, really well for the house. Uh, so that is part of how we spent our day. But but when we were out there, uh, shout out to my sister for actually watching my kids and my dogs while we did that. Um, but while we were in the stores, my wife made several comments about just how polite everyone is. And that's one of the things that I really do appreciate about North Carolina is, is people are super polite, super nice. It is like, at first I was freaked out by it. I was like, this is weird. Uh, is people going to kill me? Uh, it is like Pleasantville. But, but after a while you're like, man, this is fantastic. People speak. And when people work at a place, they talk to you and they're available to help you. It's like, it's fantastic. Uh, and people always ask, how do I like North Carolina? I love it. I absolutely love it. Green bean casserole is better on day two. Green bean casserole is better on day two and day three. Probably does not last beyond that. My wife makes amazing green bean casserole. You know when she made it? She made it today so we can eat it tomorrow and it's going to be amazing. I had never had green bean casserole until I met my wife. Now I love some green bean casserole. So, uh, hey, hey uh, Tina, huh? Tina just, she said, Stovetop needs to sponsor Reggie. Yes, please. We welcome Stovetop. I don't know who makes it, but I love you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who you are, but I love you. So we picked up some really cool stuff. One of the things that I was looking for in Hobby Lobby was a, a wood uh, American flag. Like I, I love America, right? So I wanted a wood American flag. And so I was not able to find it. I could find a cloth canvas one that was pretty dope, but I want a big wood American flag. And I think that that'll be dope to hang on a wall. I see it on Instagram all the time, but it's actually a, a gun safe. And I, <laughs> I don't necessarily need that. Uh, but I, I like, I want a wood American flag. I think that'd be dope. I think it'd be dope. So I was looking around Hobby Lobby for that and uh, I was not able to find it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, ooh, cotton mouth. I can't get on board with this. He says it's all about the White Castle stuffing. Yeah. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, no, brother. Mm -mm, no, brother. Uh, mail me some of the green. <laughs> Still Rage Day, how you doing, brother? It is good to see. He says, mail me some of the green bean casserole priority. Brother, there are two things you are not going to get out of my house. You're not going to get my mother's mac and cheese. You're not going to get my wife's uh, green bean casserole. And you're not going to get the cranberry with the lines. You're not going to get those three things out of my house, okay? Uh, that's never going to happen. Never, ever, never, ever. Will it <laughs> What is that? Reggie said cranberry on a turkey said, man, I, I, man, I, I can crush some can't come cranberry, man. I, you know, you know, I, I get when you start getting towards the end of the turkey, you know, when you, when you stretch it out, when that gets to like that third or fourth day, you start getting creative, you start getting creative. You start just, just doing all kinds of weird stuff. You know, I don't think it may be the tryptophan, maybe the tryptophan that just makes you a little crazy where you just start getting willy nilly with it. And so Brian is like cranberry on the turkey sandwiches. My, my, my late grandmother used to make this, um, I don't even know what it was, but it was like she would take over, take all the leftover turkey parts and she would mix it up in almost like a gravy or something like that. And you would have like a sandwich. It was like a not sloppy Joe because but it's like a gravy sandwich. But that sounds gross when you say it out loud. I don't know what the woman used to do. She, she used to mix some stuff up. I used to eat it. and It was amazing. I don't know what it was that she used to do, uh, but she would man, she would stretch out some Thanksgiving stuff. She would stretch it out and it was, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty, fly, pretty fly. You sir are a nut. So for those folks that came in a little late, 
I uh, wanted to just let everybody know that there's three comic shops in the U.S. that still have copies of the guide. Uh, J.A.F. Comics in Pennsylvania, A1 Comics in Sacramento, and then the last is Ages of Comics in uh, Alaska. Shout out to all three of those comic shops. Uh, they are all linked on the Reggie Collects uh, website. If you go to the site, you're looking for them. Uh, if you go to the page that is focused on the guide, you can actually find their websites and all of their information. So one of the things that I watched yesterday, I watched this movie, Shang-Chi. Shang Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings. I watched it. I enjoyed it. Um, it. It did not feel like a true Marvel movie to me because it didn't have all the, the spandex. You know, I'm a big fan of the spandex. I, I'm a fan of that. But this was in some ways a, a foundational type of movie for shang chi so that we could figure out who this dude was what his world is where he comes from all that kind of stuff and i enjoyed it i enjoyed the fight scenes i enjoyed the the, the stuff with his his mother the stuff with his father i mean that stuff was interesting i have no true foundation of where shang chi comes from but i enjoy watching this movie and uh i don't know if you guys haven't seen it i encourage you to check it out i just wish there was more spandex i need more spandex in my movies from marvel i'm gonna just throw it out there i like spandex but but this again was not a bad movie at all i actually paused it towards the end because i needed to uh i needed to do something and I did not watch the end until today. And I missed probably like the last like four minutes of the movie. So I was able to sit down today and watch the last four minutes of it. But this is available uh, right now on the Disney Plus. It is available on Disney Plus. I think it became available like two days ago. Maybe it's the 24th. Maybe. I don't know. It was available, just made available recently. And, and I just saw it. And again, it was not bad at all. So uh, we watched Shang-Chi a couple of days ago. We loved it. It says run the comments. There you go. Uh, uh, Fat Dad is saying it is really good. Norman Robinson is in the house. How you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, scrolling through uh, the comments here. Um, uh, Ron, run the comics says, like how they describe the Mandarin. Don't need more spandex, though. First of all, watch your mouth, okay? Watch your mouth on the back half of that comment. You always need more spandex like cowbell. You need it as much as you can get, okay? Um, but but as far as the Mandarin thing, I thought that that was fun because there were there were there was, as you remember, a lot of people that did not like the whole Mandarin thing before. I didn't have a problem with it, and I think that they they uh, they tied up it in a really awesome bow in Shang Chi. Right. The way that they described it, you know, the way that they, you know, appropriated his name and his identity and all that kind of stuff. I thought that it was really well done. And this is this is this next point is not an original thought by me. This is actually something that someone said somewhere. And I don't know who the person was, could have been in a personal chat, could have been in a live stream. I honestly don't remember. But it's this idea that people are all up in arms over the Black Widow movie with uh, the way that the Taskmaster was portrayed. And all you have to do is look at the way that they handled the Mandarin in Shang-Chi to realize that there is still always hope for you to get what you want. Sometimes you have to do what you do to tell a really good story, but that doesn't mean that that's the end of the tale. And I think that this is this, what they did with the Mandarin in Shang-Chi was incredibly, incredibly well done. I thoroughly enjoyed that aspect of it. And again, if those folks are uh, saddened, if someone out there is saddened by the Taskmaster, uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned because you never know how it is all going to play out. <laughs> uh, Eternal Thunder says, Shang-Chi was great. My only gripe was that I feel that the final boss took away from the buildup around this father being the bad guy. Oh, I get that. I respect that. I, I respect that. You know, they, they they basically portrayed his dad as more of a uh, a guy that was misunderstood versus a truly evil man. Potentially, potentially because, you know, I don't know, maybe they they did not want to cast that shadow on Shang-Chi. Again, if you, if you remember, they were like, you are part, you know, your mother, part your father. You know, to have an evil dad means that you have evil in you. And so maybe they wanted to avoid that 
evilness in him to say that he was just misunderstood. He was misguided. He was, you know, all of these wonderful things, but his, he kind of took a detour for the sake of love. Right. So maybe that's potentially why they, they ended up doing that. I'm not quite sure, uh, but it's what just came out of my mouth. So we're just going to run with it. Silver age, Dave, I completely agree with you. He says, we need more Kyle Bell and more likes hit that button people. Paul says it was a good movie. There you go. Um, scrolling down through some of the comments here. I think I am all caught up. Uh, Run the comic says, I liked how they portrayed the dad. Eve, every villain isn't truly vile. They should have layers. Well done. Well done. And, and I think you're, they're, they're like onions, you know, they're like onions. So so just a few days ago, and it, this may not be a perfect analogy, but I released a video recently where I was talking about how I was, I was inspired by on a walk, right? I was inspired on a walk with my dogs. And I think some people have watched that video that kind of enjoyed it. So uh, I, I'll tell this story here. One of my dogs, the one that we almost gave away, actually got out of the gate the other day. So the gate was closing as a neighbor was walking by with, with their two dogs. And uh, my dog goes out there and she essentially gets attacked. She doesn't got get hurt, but she essentially gets attacked. And I put my hand in between because I'm like, I got to save my dog. I don't need injuries and that kind of stuff. So I, I was scratched on the backside of my hand. No big deal. So I, we get the dogs apart. And uh, the next day, my dog is my other dog is out there and uh, a similar type of thing almost happens, except this was the other dog. This is the well behaved of the two dogs that were being walked. And uh, the the owner of the dog, the, the woman versus the husband, explained to me why their other dog is the way that he is. He was that way. He's not an evil dog. He's that way because he watched their third dog years ago be uh, be attacked and and be injured severely, severely. And as a result of that, he is traumatized. So to that point that was just made there, uh, oftentimes by, by Run the Comics, oftentimes people are not truly evil. They just have something that happens to them that takes them down a path that is not necessarily a good one. And so when she explained that story to me, not that I was angry at the dog because it was the dog's fault. It wasn't my dog's fault. Uh, technically, it was my fault of anyone. It certainly wasn't her fault. Uh, but but in that moment, I was like, wow, now I understand why this dog is the way that he is. He's not He's not bad. He's simply just traumatized and trying to work through that trauma or better said, he probably never worked through that trauma. And so he is now the way that he is not truly evil, just misunderstood. So show, scrolling through um, some of the comments here. Uh, I don't know if I went down too, too deep with the tangent there. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll allow the people to explain that later on. So as I talked about early at the top of the show, it appears, it appears that LCSs are getting their shipments the way that they should. And again, if you are here in the chat and you did not get a shipment, uh, <laughs> we we don't need more trauma. We don't need more damaged people or more damaged dogs in the world. <laughs> so uh, it appears that LCSs are getting their shipments of comics right now. It appears that uh, things seem to be back on track as it relates to the distribution of comics by Diamond. And, and this is an article that appears on Newsarama that uh, dropped, I want to say, came out two, two days ago. It basically says that the comic supply chain is recovering from a ransomware attack. And, and I don't know if this is a current photo of, of Diamond. Uh, it says that this is, you know, this, this photo here was provided by Diamond. But look at that. Do you see the inventory that they have in this distribution center. That is crazy. That is a crazy, um, I've been in facilities like this. It is impressive. It is a well-run DC or distribution center is an impressive thing. So it says here, it appears that a key piece of the comic industry supply chain is largely back on track after suffering a ransomware attack in November. And if you don't know what a ransomware attack is, it is essentially where someone attacks your network and holds it hostage. Pay me X and I will free up your network. So uh, Diamond Comics distributors 
has informed its client comic book shops and bookstores that shipments of the next round of new releases that November 23rd, 24th on sale books is proceeding as planned with no delays. This is after two weeks of shipment delays as a result of a ransomware attack. And uh, let me see, scrolling through again, another, another shot of the distribution center. You can see that this is a very, very large facility. Lots of boxes, lots of inventory, and also a healthy number of people. My guess is that this is not a current photo because no one in here appears to be wearing a mask. So I am assuming that this is not a current photo uh, that was provided. So uh, it does note here that some of Diamond's websites are actually still down. And I can tell you, I do know that for a fact because I was trying to get to one of their pages uh, yesterday and it is still actually down. So it says here, and this is from Diamond. We are in the process of implementing additional cybersecurity measures that are enhancing our network security. Once again, thank you for your ongoing cooperation, understanding, and support while we bring the situation to a close. Please stay tuned for updates over the coming days and weeks as our restored, uh, restoration efforts continue to progress quickly. So again, just a, a little bit of positive news here that they are uh, coming back online. It highlights here that Diamond is an exclusive distributor in both comic shops and bookstores for Image, Dynamite, uh, Valiant, and others. It is also the primary distributor of most of the all of print comics to the comic shop market with the exception of DC and Marvel. So there you go. A little bit of some good news uh, in, in advance of Thanksgiving. I'm pretty sure those guys are thankful that uh, they are getting themselves back on track. So uh, moral of the story, need more security IT specialists in your business, especially if you make most of your money online, I don't know that I could disagree with that. I don't know that I could disagree with that in any way, shape, or form. Fingers crossed that they and others are learning their lesson from what is happening and um, and making some magic happen. So scrolling down through some of the comments here, uh, Fat Dad, thank you for stopping by, brother. Definitely appreciate that uh, you coming by. So Steve White says, my company is just recovering from a ransomware attack as well. I'll tell you, man, I'll tell you, the, these people that have the ability to hold an organization hostage through their IT need to do something better with their lives. I'm going to just go ahead and throw that out there. They need to find something else to do because this ain't it. Uh, I get, you know, it's, it's a way to make a buck, I guess, if you want to be dishonest, but <laughs> it's like find something else to do with your time, I guess. So uh, one of the other things, one of the other things that I wanted to, to hip you guys to is that, uh, you know, th this is, this is some interesting news. This is some interesting news. And I can't remember, I think it was Thomas. I think Thomas actually sent this to me. Uh, let me go back to my notes here. Uh, who sent this to me? It was Thomas, Thomas Z actually sent this to me. And, uh, essentially what this article is, uh, this is on InsideMagic.net. This thing came out a few days ago, is essentially talking about the new uh, Marvel teaser that has come out. And I actually want to play a little bit of this for you guys real quick. I, I think you guys should be able to see and hear it. Let's the watch see. is broken. And that's why I'm wearing it. A digital clock makes no sense to me. It sells the lie of a singular moment that doesn't exist. It's already gone. The proper watch lets you see the possibility of all time. That's the truth I know for more than a century of living. So essentially what this, this thing is doing is, is a trailer for a new series that is actually going to be coming out from Marvel. And essentially what this new series is going to be doing is, is it's going to tell us a less convoluted story of who and what Wolverine actually is. And anyone that's a Wolverine fan knows that his origin is a little convoluted. It is a little messy uh, and, and it, it's a little disjointed. It's a little disjointed, but essentially what this, this, these new series are going to do, and I'm using that term with an S plural because they're technically two is that it is going to clean up a lot of, of this stuff. Let me see if I can find the right passage. And it says here, he's never known. And so we've never known what was real or not. 
Now we have made it. Now we make it real. Now we make the old known, but new. Here are the hidden lives, but revisited from the vantage point of Krakoa. Time is sideways and forwards and backwards and upside down. And that is, in essence, what this event will do for Logan. We are getting all of the Wolverines. So basically what they are doing is a, is two series that are going to come out the same way that House of X and Powers of Ten came out and basically alternate it. It sounds like they are about to do the same thing for 10 of lives and 10 deaths of Wolverine. I believe that it's going to be two separate issues or two separate series that are going to alternate, alternate and basically give us a less convoluted origin story for who Wolverine is. And it's going to tie up a lot of the loose ends. It's going to provide a lot more uh, understanding of, again, who this character is, where he comes from. It's going to tie together all of the various lives that he has essentially led. And I'm kind of intrigued by that. I'm kind of intrigued by that. In the article, this article basically puts forth the notion that they are doing this to give people a good foundation for who Wolverine is in advance of a series actually coming out, I'm sorry, in advance of a movie or something like that coming out. And so again, I think that this is a pretty interesting thing if it is indeed true. And I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Um, but, but let me play a little bit more of this. That's the reality of a world where I could step through a moonlit gate in Tokyo and onto a sun-washed beach in Rio. Times sideways, and times forwards, and times backwards, and upside down. Logan, Logan. It's time. So again, in, in this, what you are seeing is all of those different versions of Wolverine and Logan that we've seen over the decades. Like we are, we are, you see the different looks of him. And one of my favorite, of course, is Weapon X by Barry Windsor Smith legendary run uh i've seen uh that a couple of times in this trailer and and i'm excited i'm excited for this because also the wonderful thing about it is that we've seen not just the different versions of wolverine in the comics we've also seen him on screen and so the question is what are they going to keep from what we've seen on screen and how are they going to mix the on-screen stuff with the comic stuff to put us in a position to see an all-new version of Wolverine later in the MCU? So again, this is pretty exciting stuff. So here's the thing. Did you just, I don't know if you guys just saw that. I don't know if you saw that in the most recent um, in the most recent uh, CGC countdown video. I talked about Omega Red and you just saw the very first essentially villain that you saw in this trailer was Omega Red. And they show him a few more times in here as well. And there is he was again. And again. So again, I don't want to play too much of this. They're probably going to put some restrictions on it. But I, I think that it's really cool that they did this trailer. Uh, again, shout out to Thomas for actually sending this over to me. Fingers crossed that this actually ultimately leads to us seeing a dope version of Wolverine in the MCU at some point uh, in the near future. Then Chris Baker's like, Omega Red, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. It is coming milt is in the house. How you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Steve uh, White is asking whether it is true that Noctera has been optioned. Yeah, it was actually optioned a couple of months ago. I think a couple of months ago, uh, we, we we spoke about the fact that it had been optioned. I think there were some additional details that came out a few days ago. I, I think I saw something on Key Collector app actually popped up. But uh, we, I do believe, I do believe that Noctera was optioned a few months ago. And uh, again, if you read that comic, if you read that comic, you could not help but see the possibility for a post-apocalyptic show of some sort. And uh, as you guys know, I, I went pretty heavy on Noctera and I did it not because of the optioning, not because of the, the possibility of a show. I did it honestly because I thought that Noctera was dope. 
I think it's an amazing read. Uh, and, and uh, super honorable nephew, uh, just put me to shame because he has like all the copies of all the variants that have ever come out from Noctera. So, shout out to that guy, but yeah, I do believe that that is indeed true. Uh, and, and I'm hoping that they do it uh, justice. I do believe that they will do it justice. So, scrolling through, um, Viltastic says Wolverine Origin was the book that got me back in the comics after a hiatus. I thought that Origin. Uh, and House of M did a pretty good job of cleaning up the origin, but curious to see what this series is about. It will be very, very interesting to see how they want to play it. So Lee, how you doing? Lee says he is hyped for it. He is indeed because he is a true uh, X-Men fan in every sense of the word. So shout out to him. Uh, looking forward to getting this thing, man. So uh, Kimball, Kimball is following up on my comments about those people that actually, um, that do the ransomware attacks and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, I would, I agree. And, and I want to, I'm scrolling back up because I needed to acknowledge this shout out to my man, Nosh. I absolutely appreciate the super chat brother. That is a very, very generous uh, super chat. Uh, so thank you very much for that. I, I saw I pop in, but I was too busy running my mouth, but I did want to backtrack to, <laughs> to acknowledge that Nosh. I appreciate you brother. Stay safe out there on those roads. My friend um, scrolling through, uh, we, we are going to change the slab wall. We're going to change it out. I'm actually going to get, uh, busy and make it happen. Uh, let me see. I was scrolling through. I could see either Noctera or God. I, I would agree with that. I think that both of those, again, I, I am a fan of like post-apocalyptic kind of stuff. And Geiger is very much that, very much that. I think Noctera is a twist. It's a little bit of a twist on that post-apocalyptic, but both of them are really, really fantastic. And I've said it before and I'll continue to say it. We are honestly living in a golden age of some really awesome stuff that is coming out from from uh, from publishers right now. Uh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Scrolling through some of the comments here, seeing what else you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Every everybody sees Omega Red behind everything. Chris Bigger said I need to do a Wolverine wall. I don't know if I have enough books to do it. Technically, isn't that kind of sort of a Wolverine wall kind of sort of already? Like minus a couple of books, we got a lot of Wolverine back there. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough uh, books to do a full. Uh, Wolverine wall. I don't know if I have enough. I would have to think about that. It might have to be a mixture of raw versus and graded because I think that's the only way to make it happen. So run the comics as Noctera and Geiger are both well done. Also, we live great stories with legs on them. Again, uh, you got to love it. You got to love it. Definitely a golden age of independent comics. Again, just there's there's so much creativity that is out there right now in in the community. It is, it is nice to see all of that creativity, by and large, being able to find a conduit to come out, whether it be through Substack or through Kickstarter or through you know some of these smaller publishers uh, or through webisodes and things like that. It's really amazing to see the 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 ability for people to have an idea and to bring that life to or to bring that idea to life in some way shape or form so fingers crossed that these uh that these things continue so catface how you doing hey from the uk love the channel thank you catface i absolutely appreciate you my friend uh greetings to you over in the uk and greetings to everybody else out there uh in the uk i could probably do an alpha fight wall i, I could literally paper this entire wall with alpha flight one that's how many copies of alpha flight one that i have in the 100k collection i literally have i think i pretty much have a, a full run of alpha flight i haven't gone through and, and confirmed it but uh, i have two bins of nothing but alpha flight but they're all raw i don't think i have a single graded alpha flight wall but uh to the point if i could do a mixture of uh wolverine not wolverine titles but uh wolverine related books but they would mostly be raw mostly be raw so uh scrolling through uh, let me see. Uh, Catface is putting a putting a thing a plug out there for Gunslinger Spawn. I have not read. I I tried to read what is it Spawn's Universe and I and I petered out. I petered out. I tapped out. I had to tap out. Uh, it was it was it was a long one. It was that was a long book. I did not make it through. I have not read Gunslinger or any of the other more recent titles. But uh, Catface is saying it is epic. Says it's epic. So we shall see. We shall see. Uh, scrolling through. 
Um, where will we be? Um, I watched both of those shows and I'm talking about the original, the outer limits. Uh, I think it's, that's been done twice. Outer limits is incredible. Incredible. I'm a huge fan. Um, what is that? Uh, magnificent key comics says I'm going to slab that Reggie smart collecting book as soon as I buy one, but may have to buy two. So at least I can follow that. <laughs> Ah, if only you can get a copy, my friend, if only you can get a copy because I am completely sold out, but you can get them at JAF comics in Pennsylvania, a one comics in Sacramento and ages of comics, three comic shops that do have copies because I am completely sold out of that comic. So three shops where you can actually pick it up. Uh, Terry, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Um, do I have any Canadian price variants of Alpha Flight 1? I do not believe so. I don't, I did find some price variants in the 100K collection and they were Wolverine, not Canadian, but price variants. I don't have any Canadian price variants that, that readily come to mind. None readily come to my mind right now. So, but we do love some Canada. We do love some Canada. Um, scrolling through, what is that? There are so many indies that would make dope TV shows, i.e. the six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton. Shout out to, uh, shout out to, uh, Skybound. They, they hooked me up, uh, with, with a short box full of comics, including multiple books from six sidekicks that were handed out at garage con. Uh, I don't know who it was that, that walked away with the, that massive omnibus, uh, but shout out to them for, for, uh, for picking that up and carrying it back to their car, because that was not an easy feat. Uh, scrolling through, scrolling through, uh, Chris Bigger is asking, will there be a second print variant? I don't know. I don't know. Is there enough demand? Is there enough demand? Like I hear people that are like, Hey, I wish I could have gotten a copy. Hey, do you still have copies available? But is there enough demand to warrant another full print run? And I can tell you, as you guys know, uh, paper is at a premium, which means that printers charge extra money, right? So the question is, is there enough demand to warrant a second print run of the book? I don't know. I honestly don't know. And this is something that that Doug and I discuss and we we noodle and you know we like to do it but the question is is there enough demand to warrant it so uh matt woods i, I he says the guy to smart comic collecting is the hottest book in the country <laughs> i might have to drive to the other side of the state to get one that's what's up thank you for the kind words brother i definitely appreciate it so uh scrolling through some of the comments here uh milt says i'm sitting here with three weeks worth of books and a bunch of stuff i've picked up in the last two weeks i'm going to be reading till next new comic book day milt was at garage con it was an absolute pleasure to meet he and his son uh they they, they hit a lot of comic shops they hit a lot of comic shops uh and milt milt was kind enough to while he was here provide me with several aoks for members of my family like he he, he came bearing gifts he hooked it up so i definitely appreciate that brother so thank you my man so uh no no way no 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 <laughs> is foil at a premium brother i think everything is at a premium right now but but again getting back to the question at hand i i would like to do a second print run um doug and i have discussed it many 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 times the question is is there enough demand to offset the cost of of the of that you know that that is our challenge so uh, scrolling through some of the comments here. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, this guy, this guy, they, multiple people are asking for uh, transparency. What I will tell you, what I will tell you is that, uh, you know, I am as transparent as I can be without divulging things that other people don't want to have known. Right. So I am, I am transparent as transparent as I can be without giving up secrets if they were, uh, that are not my own. Right. Um, and so what I will tell you is that you have to wait and I will try to reveal uh, additional details when I can in a way that does not jack other stuff up. So that, that is like incredibly cryptic, incredibly cryptic but that's all that I can do for you right now. <laughs> all right. So the very, the very last thing that I want to highlight is this right here. Let me see if I get it up on screen. I am headed downstairs momentarily to watch this right here, Hawkeye. So my friends over at Geekosity Mag, which I think is they, they've had like 
Geekocity Mag is, is a incredibly well-trafficked website that focuses on news related to comics IP, right? Um, they, they, they gave me many, many months ago, uh, some photos from the set showing these folks filming the movie or the, the series, uh, many, many months ago. Now we are actually going to get our first look at this thing. I think the first two episodes are actually out. I'm going to watch them tonight and I'm honestly excited to watch it. I've seen a headline or two that basically says that, uh, the show missed the mark, but I don't. I, I like to be my own judge when it comes to some of this stuff because I like things that other people don't like. Uh, so I'm actually going to make it uh, make make up my own mind. So Lee says, so fun. Enjoyed the show. Uh, I don't know if he's talking about this show or the Hawkeye show. I'm going to assume he's talking about both. Uh, Brian says, watched it today. Very good start. Steve White says, Hawkeye was good. I just watched the first two episodes. Um Magnificent says Shang Chi just popped up on Amazon Prime today. Haven't seen it. I watched. I watched Shang Chi. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So uh, Chris Bigger did not know that it was out. It is out. The first two episodes, I do believe, are available right now. And like I said, I'm going to walk downstairs here momentarily, uh, and I'm going to check them out. So I'm going to be awesome. I'm going to be. I'm looking forward to reading it. Sorry, I'm trying to talk and read at the same time, which is sometimes. Uh, very, very difficult. So a uh, really good start to the series. Looking forward to seeing where it goes. Well, that, that's all good news. That's all good stuff. Uh, I am pumped about it. So uh, let me see. What is that? What does that say? Uh, what is it? What does that say? What does that say? So question, question on eBay and Amazon. The hardcover for something is killing the children with the slip case costs around 126. I've never seen or never seen, never heard of a hardcover going up in value. Have you? Uh, not for a comic. I think hardcover books can go up in value. I am uncertain as to whether this comic book with the slip cover case, which is dope, by the way, from Boom Studios, whether it is actually going to go up in value. Uh, I can tell you, I, 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 126 is a lot of money. That's a lot of money to me. Uh, I personally would not be buying that, that, but that's just me. That's just me. So it, anyway, um, I want to, to, again, uh, thank you guys for spending a little bit of your, your time with me. Uh, I saw a lot of people at the very beginning talk about what they are thankful for, and I'm actually going to to maybe end on that note. I, I am extremely thankful for, uh, for my family. Um, and we, I don't talk about this stuff a lot, but there, there are things that are happening in my family, um, that are, are getting better. Right. And, and I'm very thankful that, that things are getting better. I'm very thankful for my family as a whole. I'm thankful for the life that we have built here in North Carolina and hopefully will build upon for decades to come. I am very thankful for uh, all of the folks that subscribe to the channel, that take the time to watch the videos, that listen to the podcast. Uh, very thankful for those people that came out to Garage Con. It was an absolute pleasure getting a little bit of time to hang out with some people uh, beyond the one-way thing that I do here, talking to a camera like a crazy person. It was nice to actually talk to people face to face, not behind masks, but to talk to people face to face and to shake hands and to give people hugs and to take photos and to have people here in the comic book room. I am thankful for those experiences and I am thankful for all of those people that have allowed me to reach 15,000 subscribers. We we just crossed that mark and Tina was the very first person to send me a message about that. And I said, no, let's slow down, Tina. Let's, let's get over the 15,000 even number. Let's get to something a little bit beyond that. We ended up getting to, I think like 15,000, 10 people a little bit earlier today. Uh, my, my point here is that I have a lot of things to be thankful for. And with Thanksgiving, I like to take some time to reflect upon all of those wonderful things that are happening in my life instead of focusing on those the negative side of things. And I would definitely encourage everyone out there that that in this country that participates in Thanksgiving or, or not, even in other countries, to take some time, slow down, think about everything that you have, focus on what you have going on in your life and the people that are in your life and be thankful for those things. 
because so too often we get focused on the stuff that we don't have, the stuff that we want, the negative stuff. Take some time to focus on the positive stuff because in my mind, there is oftentimes a lot more positive than there is negative. With that said, I'm going to wrap this up. If you guys need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.